Well, welcome back, everyone. I think we're ready to resume for our uh, first day of the day. I'm going to uh, hand off to Curtis Shaw, who's directed uh, Philippa Capital. Hello everybody. Yes, as Len said, I'm the director of Ill-Advised Capital by Sauna Hashmat, and that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. say the same for each other? Even in birth, I am still myself. The essence of self is defined by self. So what is it then? By consciousness, by awareness, I am human and I think. So do animals not have self? Animals are beneath humans. They stay cattle. By consciousness, we were able to dominate this world. And what is the consciousness defined by? By me. <laughs> and who is me? You and me. Me? You! But by the distinction of you and me, we exist in two different realms of consciousness. There is no distinction. And yet the me that is myself and the you that is yourself says so. You're confusing me? I won't have it, not here. By whose orders? Mine. But I did not oppose this conversation. Because you're not me! And yet you say we have the same consciousness. Oh, to hell with consciousness. Who are you? Me! <laughs> and who am I? I don't know. That's unfortunate, isn't it? <laughs> what do you define yourself as? Well, here's where we agree. I don't know either. Who can define <laughs> themselves but themselves? And what is the definition of self? Thoughts, personality, experience. These things are not infallible. This is just a result of how fickle humans are. They are subject to change. Therefore, they are not core to my being. Experiences of time, time can only flow forward and never back. Dictates the nature of being. The progression in life is in a crescendo. You talk as though you were not human. And you talk as though you've been struck between the eyes. Stand corrected. So here we stand at an impasse. You are not clever. I'd like to believe I am. <laughs> Still, this impasse stands regardless of our own standing. Such independence is painful to the human condition. Why? Curiosity. Curiosity wishes to be sated. Well, curiosity will have to make do with the reality of the future. Which is? There's no obsoletes. My heart! My darling heart! Does it beat? You are alive as ever. No, you insolent fool! My child! My heart remains full so long as my womb is with its kin. Another parasite would- Why you? Enough! We are all kindred beings of God. Let us pray for health and safety. I pray too, no for, no matter whether it be for a noble or a god. Blasphemy. Yes, I, blasphemy. Should I bend the knee to you, your grace unto God's degree? I have opened the gates for a sniveling whelp like you, and you come with your delusions of grandeur. Better should I have locked you out with the rest of the fall. And so here he admits, behold our benevolent Savior who beseeches God, we, only are established by God's gates, for which he spared the folk who sinned so fervently in his presence by criminal poverty. Please be at rest with your fervor. Now is time for thought. Thought does not run truth without discourse. Otherwise, it holds to obedience. It must be friendly. I am not here to be friends. I am here to survive. Such survival will get you killed. Selfishness and greed make do with plenty of corpses. I'd rather that than slave another day with a pump on this one. You little... Be quiet! My child is more adult than you. The rations, they're dwindling day by day. Damn me. Your eyes must be failing you in spite of such youth. How delightful. A noble cock can come in her strife. Come now, what is left? We only have a bit of bread and cheese left. The length of days between us I cannot say. Oh, shut up. A beggar knows more than a consummate of birthright. Three days. Can't gorge ourselves so luxuriously. 
rightly said by the nobility. What should we do? What most do when disaster becomes, becomes of us? We drink! <laughs> you want us to drink to stupor. And you are asking for temperance at the world's end. My lord, people are dead. This is no time to drown our sorrows. There is no need for sorrow. Whether death is by age or plague, it is the will of God that decides its course. Such piety in the behest of death. Though I imagine life is worth only a man's estate than its virtue. You are my loyal servants. Servants, not people, not mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters, servants. You argue from the heart, impassioned and volatile. But these words only sigh of bitter emotion and perilous affliction. I say how it is what you have told me without the allure of a title. <laughs> Why should you care for all the dead? Do you weep? Do you grieve? Will you remember? I am grief and anguish. Their pain is mine because I am them. I am still as long as, as time immemorial. <laughs> for bleeding heart. Do you swear loyalty to this house? I was given a life off of the streets. I could swear no more loyalty than what I own today. It is shallow. You die or you slay. Humans are selfish. They preserve themselves and discard reason above all else. Would you do anything for your child? Anything. Cheat? Steal? Prostitute? My love knows no greater sin than to abandon my child. And with that, I have proven you wrong. Words mean little in the face of trial. You are a man of insatiable hypocrisy. Well, let us toast to insatiable hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> in vino veratus. What? In wine, there is truth. Poison? Life is so inconsequential when it isn't of your kind. Why? This is my home. My food, my life I have forged, and I should forfeit these things to strangers. Are we not fellow kindred children of God? Do we not deserve to meet our own destiny till its end? I can rebuild my own. You all do not have the power nor the fortitude. And who exactly built your own? Taking shoulder to pain in establishing your name, toiled in your gardens and to their graves. My blood has conquered, and now it remains a heart to this place, to its people. And my blood was weak, a thread of a pulse. Should the vein diverge from the artery due to this trauma? You whine, you complain, and still you remain a dog unknown of its place. I tire of this intellectual masochism. My, you are of less words and of lesser substance. <laughs> How dare you! You married into wealth. And you are not recognized entirely because your blood is but a blight come your wedding day. You will never be more than a pauper chasing the dreams of a princess. You lie! You, you, you coward scoundrel! Then I should shorten that tongue of yours! Why is your glass poisoned? Uh, you, you know nothing of my glass's condition. My child and I live a lavish conditions, waited on and intended to. I am not of your kind. If I am a dog, your child is a mutt. <laughs> Shut up! Say another word and suffer the consequences! The truth is not so kind. Such is the life of eternal subservience. We make vicious animals worthy of damnation into contenders of people's fates. I, I, I will survive. Only noble blood could survive this illness. Noble blood? Yes, yes, it is true. God gave us this right to live on. We are the divine. The hierarchy recognize. The peasantry can never understand our love is but a, a duty, a difficult one. It is true the illness has taken the peasantry's hearts, but why? Because they are weak. They are without guidance. Does weakness live within us? Yes. It resides within both of you. You no. are a corruption. The corruption lies in the in no days before us. Birth and wedding. Delusions, all of it. Where pestilence and plague goes, retribution follows, does it not? It is punishment for the peasantry. They do not recognize their obligations. They become haughty, corrupt. They must go through trial, rebirth. And so of the machinery, the workers die and with them, their aid. The owners live without their profit and soon they will fight for a new hierarchy. And so dogs will begin to kill dogs. They will suffer a new apoptosis. Who deserves to live? 
Ability keeps order. Those who can do can survive. Nonsense. Those who can lead a man in orders surely will breed a new generation of strength. Ability is nothing. Ability indicates servitude. I will not toil, nor will I suffer. The world dies in a breath, and still you refuse to lift a finger. You value workers, but would discard them in an instance. They're disposable. Their jobs can be taken upon by any person with enough desperation. And yet you would not. I refuse. Ability requires disposition. Not all can perform as we can. Are you saying a simple maid's task could not be replicated? I am saying ability is not so easily handled nor treated as it would be the respect of a noble birthright. If the noble is of the second sex, she will face a life of burden. One a barren woman would dream to know, to appease the men of her household and to embody the family name to its end. Isn't such fortitude a case of birth? A role to be fulfilled only by the worthy, the most youthful, dutiful, graceful, dignified women. So as a man is to become, a woman is to be. Precisely. A wife's role, a noble woman's life, is to be the accessory of her husband's accomplishments and the key to his progeny. The sick, the elderly, the homeless, the barren women, they are idle to the progression of society. Should they be casted away? If people do not share the burden of life, why must they taste the fruits of labor? You do not work a day, and yet, as though a vampire, you feed off their very essence of their blood and sweat. Earn their keep. And if keep isn't earned, they die. You're playing theatrics! They walk a few pitiful moments on the streets and then crawl into submission. Should the price of work be the invasion of death, is that what we so desire? Life is meaningless without the pursuit of it itself. Pray tell, what is your pursuit? To oversee my workers. To be born. Pardon? You are of the youth who never saw your hands wither, your eyes turned dull, and your body betrayed you. You never fought over a penny or begged on your knees. You were born, and that is your only achievement. I shall show pity to those who were panhandlers. What of those who did not fight against the tide of change, those who refused to move limbs? They deserve to die, then. They deserve to live a rat's life, so they could work suitably. If you were never married, to a title. Your child would be born a machine. They would beat that ch the childhood from him for the dying short to survive. It takes a whole family to feed a child, and it takes a child to feed a family. Don't say such vile and crude words to me. I am above the light you illustrate, and so is my child. If you say it, it is so. However, I remember time. It's really an incredible thing, you know. I remember being young, growing up in the slums, where the rich would spit on me. Just get up and polish your shoes. Lick the pennies off your souls and be grateful to find a nickel. These days, we step over you, but here I am, offering you a position above being the ground I walk, but just beneath the footstool. And what talent did they have but to be born in the favor of Lady Fortune? While they sip their wine, dine their steak, it is us who prepares the plate, clean the utensils, and keep them happy, fat on their greens. They starved us all to death, and for what? For being at the top of the food chain. The years are, have overtaken me, and still I can smell the sweat and polish. It smells, it, it's a smell that sinks into your skin. This poverty will never leave me, not until I crawl out here a rich man. And even if I dress in their attire, speak their talk, walk as they posture, I would still have myself a man of the dregs. It's one thing after the other with them, isn't it? If your blood wasn't nicked from the upper class, you're just another cur masquerading among dis distinguished purebreds as if they were dogs. It doesn't matter if time becomes immemorial. It never will be for these parasites. They were raised in blood. No amount of bastardry will sell you their pride. I remember time I cannot afford to forget. Shut up! I remember time too. I remember it as the pain in my souls and the tightness of my dress. I remember my labor, my shame, my resolve. I can make it. I believe so. I may be a lowly maid, but I can do, I can aid. I am a pawn in the beginning, but I will fight, I must, for my recognition as a queen. How long have you worked? Years. And years mean nothing. Power is everything. To betray, to be corrupted, to lie, cheat, and steal. You find allyship in a change of position, but a pawn is still a pawn when it's exchanged for a queen. To live is to be rejected, to be outcast, to downtrodden, never see day till they look up. 
There are many who will accept you as you walk among chiffon and silk. Of course. They may see opulence, but underneath they will always be repugnant class, and it will always be your undoing. Lies. All of them. You are a man full of counterfeit beliefs. It takes only the noblest to be of affluence. Well then, mate, let us submit ourselves to a noble cause. In the afterlife, we can chase all the dreams we have. This is the ultimate obedience, the ultimate truth of being. I do this for you, God. Please hear me true. They both drink the wine and gasp, clutching their chests and falling to the ground motionless. Oh, thank God. Even in that. <laughs> Even in death, he still wears a smile of malice. Deceitful man. Please, give me this knife. What for? Have we uh, ourselves a feast, do we not? I am famished. What? We must kept fed. My, chil my child hungers for its course. She goes to take a knife, plunging it into one of the bodies. The noble backs away in fear. You're infected. You aren't? Oh, life is so quick to be to end as it is to begin. By another hand, though, that's. But hasn't hidden history been written in this same likeness? The privileged eaten, the downtrodden, the powerless succumb to the powerful, the struggle of hierarchy turned to blood. Cruelty is innate in humanity, is it not? I don't believe so. I think this disease is unnatural. Why have you come to this conclusion? Because I have realized who you and I are. Ooh, and who is that? We are but people. People! <laughs> Personal identity, the root of the aid, it's the cure to this ailment. What does that mean? We live because we can, we must. There is no reason for life. That being, no justification, but even so, we live. So identity resides in the uselessness of life. No, no. Uh, the, <laughs> or the concept of you and I are constructs. We give them meaning by our own definition. But by the others around us. We believe in what we are told, how we are treated, how we treat others. We are the perception in our eyes and the next. So then who are you? I am you. And. Was there anything specifically that uh, 
inspired you to write this, or was it kind of just like the accumulation of a life under capitalism? Um, well, I think COVID really, it was amazing to me actually, um, in the news and stuff, they were talking about uh, the COVID pandemic and how it affected people and how, oh, we are recognizing the, the working class was like uh, helping us, when really it should have been always, we should have known that the working class is always uplifting the society itself. And it was so intriguing to me that people were just now recognizing that. And I think it's, it's a uh, fact that we don't really touch upon, like especially with the intersection of, of gender and, and race and stuff. So I guess it was like from the response of COVID, I was like, you know, why not try to push this, especially since we're not slaves. So Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before we open it up to the audience, do you have any questions for the audience? Cool. <laughs> Hello, audience. We just saw a play. Do you have any questions for the playwright? Oh, is that, is that a, yeah, that's a hand. Yeah. You write in this really, really cool heightened way. Uh, first of all, I just want to say it's really cool to listen to. Um, my question, kind of going off of that, would be like, um, when you're starting out writing a project, how do you decide kind of what like register of like poetry you're going to be like writing in? Um, well, to be honest, I don't really know what questions for our theories. There's one. I guess two questions. Um, first of all, did you ever worry that the audience would not necessarily grasp what you were trying to present? Because I think I'm a part of like the audience that was at times like, oh my god, I had to actively listen and think about this as it's happening. How did how was sort of that juggling of, of the concepts you want to present with you know, presenting them in a way that would Yourself, 
how these characters think too, because they're all specific ideologies. Any one of these people can be played by anyone. Um, Save for the noble, because the noble's really like someone like above like elite society, like probably like Jeff Bezos or something. But um, yeah, I would really want people to think about that and to think more into not just surface level like capitalism bad, but more like what are what are the theories behind all of these characters and everything? Cool. Do you have any other questions? There's one. I see one. I was going to say, I didn't get a context, but uh, Anthony uh, conditioned through running uh, the Be Young Playwrights program at PMB uh, through notable acts um, who were doing that. So we started a, a new incubator program for first time playwrights this year. It was sort of a couple of months long uh, bi weekly process. Uh, and we were one of the participants in that program. So I'm wondering if you wanted to just. Uh, Find a little bit on on uh, what if, what hopefully something came out of that <laughs> that, uh, that process uh, of going through our, our new incubator and how it made us uh, hope to. Here's your chance to talk about it right now. <laughs> Amazing. 